Hey, this is Ronald from MathSkills University. And today I want to talk about the free video editor inside Blender. And this is version 4.3. I recently completed a video on 4.2. So I'm going to keep those aspects that are still applicable, but also show you some of the new features in 4.3. Regarding the updates in the video editor between version 4.2 and 4.3, in the other category, the masking was moved down in the modifier section. There are some changes to the optimization and speed ups in the modifiers and different sections of the program. There's also some more intermediate to advanced compositing changes, none of which will really affect you at all if you're a beginner, even to an intermediate user. I've also linked the main video from Blender with all the changes below. Once you look blender you'll see this then go up here click on the plus sign I can go down to video editing and then video editing or go to file new and then video editing. Inside Blender 4.3, it still operates basically the same. In the preview window here, instead of the eyedropper being our default tool, it's the select box. You'll see that here too. And that's why it looks different over here. We also have more options over here. And then over here we have a quick cut razor blade. Besides that, everything else is pretty much the same. There are a few different cosmetic changes. The three things I want to talk about. Number one is the new connect strips and disconnect strips function or command plus option plus C as in cat. We can disconnect that or connect it. When they come in, they're connected. But now I can disconnect that. See, they're connected, the paper clip there. Keep in mind when they're connected, you can't add any transitions or any kind of effect strips to them. Another quick thing I want to do since I have audio load, if you press the S's in Sam on your keyboard, now I can scroll down my audio like this. And you can zoom into that as well. But now you can hold the shift key and really zoom in and go one frame at a time or I can scroll up and down just moving the mouse left to right. The last thing I want to point out would be the use of the snap tool. Now this will snap two assets or strips together like that. If I click on the snap tool, the options, now I can snap to a border, a center, or other strips. With the snap tool, if I go over to add and then go down to effect strip, and go to transform, I'll get my transform. Then I can make sure I turn on snapping. And since I have all the boxes checked, when I move this, it's going to snap into place. Those are just a few of the new features in 4.3. Now that we're done with the changes, as I said before, I did a video on version 4.2 about a month or so ago. So it was a few days before the new changes came out. And I wanted to make sure I got a grip on those before I continue with the video. Since what I'm about to show you hasn't changed in the new version, I'm just going to keep what I did already. With that said, without further ado, let's get started. Once you're in here, it looks like a normal editor. Over here you have your export settings. I'll go over that really quickly. We have 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. I can change the output where it's going here. I'll make that D, accept that. Then I can use this file format. Go down to encoding right here and change it to QuickTime or whatever you have. And there are a lot of Linux users who use Blender. It's a really good editor and it's absolutely free. But I just want to give you an idea how this will compare to DaVinci Resolve, CapCut, Filmora, or whatever you're using. Over here we have our timeline, but this is our sequence. That's what it's called here. Our layers are called channels. I can have an infinite number of channels. Over here, we have our inspector like in DaVinci Resolve, and for more or CapCut, it's up here. That's what we have so far. There's too many things to do here to go over everything. I'm just gonna show you how this will work if you're editing. So let me grab some assets and we'll bring some in. One key thing to take note of is that they go by frames. I start on frame one. This clip has 250 frames. If I hold my Alt or Option key and scroll down on my mouse, I'll get that. I can scrub my timeline up. I'll get that. I can also change that here, go reverse, forward, whatever. If I hold control or command and scroll down, scroll up, 
if I just scroll down or up holding nothing on the keyboard, once I click this clip, I can also drag clips around any way I want. But this gray area here is my workspace. This is out of bounds. I can hold control or command to bring that back. On the right side to the bottom, I have basic compositing like you have in any other video editor. I have transform, crop, video, things like that. I can also do keyframing right here. Same way as most editors. If I go down to color, I'll see this. But if I click on this down side menu, I'll get this. If I click on this drop down menu, I can change the brightness. We have curves down here. And then we also have our color wheel. If I go over here to color balance, I'll have our color wheel and more options. A lot of stuff you'll find in a lot of editors are here. You can play around with that. Let's bring down another video. And let's do some cutting. So if I want to cut this video, I'll click on it and just press K. If I grab this, I can scroll up and down the timeline, press K, press delete, and that's gone. If I want to shorten the video, just grab the end and shorten it. Now I have two files stacked up. I can go over here, click on the top menu to the right up here, and we'll change our screen to multiply. I can also change the opacity right here. We'll put it back to one. That's how that works, like most video editors. I can also do effects, so I can click on this. I can go over here to add, and I can add anything here. Sound effects, different things like that. They also have something called speed controls. If I make a cut in the middle of a clip and decide that I wanted to either speed up or slow down the middle clip, I'll go over here to add, go down to speed control, then I can grab the edge of that clip and bring it in to speed it up or extend it down the sequence or timeline to slow it down. You can also incorporate keyframing to create your desired speed wrapping effect. You can also work with adjustment layers and other effect strips such as glow, for example, right on top here. You can also bring in things like sound. You can also drop a color strip onto your sequence or a timeline bring in multiple images to create a GIF. You can also create multiple camera angles. I can also go to add and go down to transform and use that to to move videos around on the screen to stack up videos and create 4x4 videos or vertical 3x3 videos etc. If I want to create a transition between these two clips I can do something like this to stack them on top of each other. And this will be the duration of my transition. Or I'll click on the top one, hold shift, click on the bottom one, go to add, come on down to transition, we'll make it a wipe. And that's what we'll have. We can also add adjustment layers. Just go back up here to add, bring down an adjustment layer, pop it on top, stretch it across. I can add text. Go down to add, go down to text, bring it up, put it on top. Over here to the right, now I can change what it says, color, font, whatever I want. I can also animate that text. So come on down to transform. I can make it move from left to right or right to left by clicking on the keyframe sign here. Take this text and we can drag it out like we do any other animator. We can also go over here and add fade in or fade out on the text. We can do both. So it fades in and fades out. Let's go up to the top. We can make it bold, whatever we want. We can put a box around it. Different colors. Sound works the same way too. If I bring in a video clip, so this is the same thing, audio. You can detach it as well, just grab it. Pretty simple. Now we go into the sound. I can change that. I can change the timing of the sound. There's a lot of things you can do in this software. As you can see now, we're out of bounds because my frames only stop at 500. So if I make this a thousand, and this is why this only works in frames and not minutes. So even when you export, you're going to export it to a particular frame point. So I may say, I want to export all of this. So I'll go right here, and where am I at? Frame 957. Let's go back to about right here. I'm at frame 624. Let's make our start one. 
our n620 and I could make our start 10 or whatever I want. Now the video is going to cut off right here when I render it. Once I have this set up, then I can go over here to render and go down here to render animation. And that's going to render. Here's a really quick navigation of all the menus within Blender video editing software. And how some of the things on the right, you can find those also in some of the drop down menus inside the workspace area. And that's pretty much it. And that gives you at least an idea of how this differs or is similar to most other video editors. Once it renders, I'll play it back. That's what I have so far. And that's the file number if you don't give it a name. But it plays really good. It does a good job. And if you want something that's totally free, please like, share, and subscribe. Until we meet next time, have a great day. Peace.